I've got CC uh, two three five one or three no two three. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. In my hands I have two Zigbee enabled devices. Now this is a temperature and humidity sensor from Xiaomi and this is IKEA remote uh, with a couple of buttons. They both run on batteries and they both support Zigbee. Why Zigbee? Zigbee is one of the better protocols to use when with battery operated devices. And today I'm trying to answer a question, which way we should go uh, at home automation? Whether we should go for the Zigbee enabled uh, consumer graded products or go for DIY route with something like this. And this is a, a Zigbee stick. Now let's uh, talk about consumer grade products because I've been using both of them for a while. Now in all fairness it took me about five minutes to find a, a trad free hub because IKEA is not really impressive in that regard. If it works for you that's great, I have no problem with it. I think the biggest advantage of IKEA product line is that you can actually run them hubless for most of the part and they're doing a pretty decent job. However, I've been using a uh, Mi Home uh, from Xiaomi for about six months now, integrating this with my heating, integrating this with the switches. Uh, I could uh, do a lot of things uh, thanks to this small device. Now, uh, last year Xiaomi promised integration with IKEA products, but apart from the light bulbs, they're not supporting anything else. So for the last couple of months, all the remote controls I got for IKEA were gathering dust. So far, Xiaomi has been really great with Mi Home supporting over 100 devices, uh, ranging from small sensor like this, sensors like this to scooters. So um, it does highlight the big, biggest disadvantage of the series, meaning that unless the product is supported by uh, Xiaomi, by the manufacturer, you'll find yourself with the product being useless, Last, like this button, which I was not able to use in my home automation node red. Now Xiaomi exposes that information to node red, which is great. So you can pass the information passing through the hub to node red and use it in your own home automation, which I did with sensors. Uh, unfortunately, not all, not all of the devices are connected this way. And a good example is the uh, video doorbell that I've uh, purchased recently from Dealing. It's compatible with Xiaomi. Unfortunately, it doesn't send any of the information to the hub itself and I am not able to intercept that information, which is a bit of a shame. Another thing is, is the fragmentation of the market. So uh, a Xiaomi in particular is responsible for splitting the market between different regions and uh, the doorbell itself was only available on Chinese servers which would disable automatically access from home assistants like Alexa or Google Home. And that's another disadvantage of using consumer grade products. Even though you have by default a support for a nice app on your phone and maybe some integrations and skills, uh, that will purely depend on what systems you use and in what regions. Uh, there might be also a price concern when the consumer grade is slightly more expensive, but at the present time, honestly, I wouldn't really concern myself with the price because for most of the part, the difference between running DIY and running consumer grade uh, on the cheap and the budget option is going to be very similar. So now that you know the strongest and the weakest parts of the uh, consumer grade uh, Zigbee hubs, Let's uh, take a look at this. So this in particular is a CC2531 uh, Zigbee sniffer and it's connected to Raspberry Pi. Obviously it's not connected right now, but uh, this is how you would use it. You can plug it into a computer and use it via computer as well. But if you're serious about whole automation, you probably have one of those the Raspberry Pis or similar boards running your server. I'm running Royal Dread. You might be running Home Assistant. Uh, for both parts, it works. Um, pretty much the same. Now, the biggest disadvantage of this is the learning curve. 
this thing isn't very compatible with people that are just starting. It requires a lot of research and time to actually get things done. Flashing this alone took me two weeks, not because I didn't know how to do it, but because I looked at the supporting documents and first it told me like, oh, you need another special cable that you're gonna use it just once for 10 bucks and four weeks of shipping time. I was like, no, thank you. Then when I went through uh, alternative uh, flashing options, well, I appreciate the tutorial, it was so convoluted that I'm gonna have a separate one just to ease that because the moment I was reading through the tutorial, I was just like, I'm not doing it right now, I don't have a time. And that even before you start powering anything, linking anything or setting in new devices because that's the thing. Now for the most part, if you're lucky, you will just pair the device as you would with a consumer grade solution and you will be able to receive the information directly to your server, so Node-RED or Home Assistant, and use it as you will. But sometimes, like with a different light I had, uh, I would have to uh, configure the device manually and pick the configuration in the files itself, which learning about took me a day, and uh, actually figure out how to control the device uh, was a bit of a challenge. And while I appreciate the, the fact that you can actually, you know, link the devices from Xiaomi, IKEA or other parties, as long as they're compatible with the same Zigbee standard, uh, the route isn't easy. You will be asked for patience, that for sure. Now, which way will I go forward? No, because I already flashed this stick and I've made it everything works. I'm probably going to continue with this for a while and see how that suits me. Now, I'm, I'm good enough in node to figure out everything, but you have to bear in mind that doing DIY comes with no support for Google or Alexa assistants. You won't have any apps. You'll be responsible for maintaining all the code, so every single integration is uh, down to you. If you're okay with that challenge, if you're happy with introducing new skills to Alexa and figure out how to connect uh, different devices, that's fine and I'll strongly encourage you and I'll have some tutorials showing you how to get started. But bear that in mind that everything you're gonna do this way, it's gonna be down to you and down to your uh, better or worse coding skills. Now, going forward, I will connect everything because the majority of my devices are right now already paired. There was a last lamp I was using to, from a completely different manufacturer, which I was setting up as a new device. And that's going to be another subject for another tutorial. But that's something I'm going to do and show you how I'm going to run my home automation 2.0 because right now my entire server is down and I'm rebuilding Node-RED from scratch uh, in a different way because I want to start using Docker. So expect a couple of more tutorials and uh, when we, since we're speaking about the tutorials, I don't have a posting schedule, so if you follow me on social media, you're gonna get a notification when something new is out. And if you watch YouTube, there's a notification bell and a subscribe button, so use that and you will get a notification about the new video. New, uh, next, one of the next videos is going to be a video about flashing the stick the easy way. Because, believe me or not, when I looked through the document and I've seen that there is a recommended time to three hours to s just to flash uh, via Arduino, I did this put my stick back to the shelf and then I just drop the whole thing instantly. So guys, if you're interested how to do it easy way, follow me and uh, I'll show you everything step by step. Until then guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.